Hi everyone, this is Dr. Jay Mehta here from Mumbai. In today's master class, we are going to have a quick session about the long protocol or the agonist protocol. One of the most important things that we must remember is that all the protocols as far as IVF are concerned are rotating around one thing and that is premature LH surge. Okay. Now this is something which you don't want at all to occur when you are stimulating a patient or when you are doing something called as a controlled ovarian hyperstimulation, right? This is something which you do not really want. In fact, the word hyper in hyperstimulation should now be sparingly used, okay? It should just be individualized controlled ovarian stimulation, which we normally call as IPOS. Long protocol or agonist protocol is something which is one of the first things to come into practice as far as IVF is concerned. What is basically done in the long protocol? In the previous cycle, let's assume approximately day 15, 16, 17, 18, whenever, once we document that corpus luteum has been formed, Okay, this is important. You have to document that the corpus luteum has formed or ovulation has occurred. In this circumstance, once you do this documentation, typically at approximately day 19, 20, 21, it could be either one of them. Alright, you are going to do an ultrasound for the patient. This is when this FSH and LH levels are at their absolute bottom. If you study the endocrinology, this is when the FSH and LH levels are at their absolute bottom. That is when you start giving the patient a GnRH agonist. Okay. This is given so that that FSH and LH does not rise. There is going to be an initially flare response which is going to happen when you give a GnRH agonist. That is how it works. Just to give small insight about this GnRH agonist, remember the entire molecule okay, is approximately of 10 peptides okay, or 10 amino acids. Let me be really really uh, careful about the terms. It is something which is a decapeptide. Okay? Decapeptide means it has 10 peptides inside that deca in fact the brand name no deca peptil that is how it is derived all right the entire magic of this molecule occurs at position number six so if you have 10 peptides position number six amino acid if you just alter that no it prevents immediate degradation of the molecule this is what allows the molecule to stay in the body for a longer period of time I know a lot about the molecular endocrinology of an agonist but I don't think it is mandatory for a routine gynecologist to understand that. Alright. So that is the key action. But what happens is once you give GnRH agonist on a daily basis there is going to be a prolonged suppression. This prolonged suppression will allow you to severely reduce the value of FSH and severely reduce the value of LH. This is very very important. Normally, people like to continue this from, let's assume you start from day 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 and then if there is spotting or on the 9th or on the 10th day, people begin with stimulation. Now, this stimulation again is going to be very, very variable. One thing which is very good about this stimulation is that because a GnRH agonist is being administered on a daily basis, there is going to be no premature LH surge. Absolutely no premature LH surge. The endogenous FSH and LH levels are severely suppressed. At our place, we routinely like to use HMG, which is highly purified HMG, which has an HCG driven LH activity. Alright, I am going to discuss about the HCG driven LH activity in our subsequent master classes on why is it good. Alright, we like to use the HMG for stimulating a patient who is on a long protocol. But there are certain modifications which we do, which I would like to discuss. So remember one thing, we like to give a depot 
When do we like to give a depot? We like to give a depot of GNRH agonist somewhere at this time between day 18 and day 21. We like to give a depot. Now, if you study the literature, the literature says that when you give a depot, you might have to use a higher value or a higher dose of HMG. That is only correct if you start the stimulation within the first 8 days of giving the depot. In fact, if you have your own laboratory and if you have the facility to test for serum estradiol, remember, after you give the depot, typically on day 10 or 11 of giving the depot, okay, so day 10 or day 11 post depot, this is when the estradiol levels are going to drop down less than 50. That is when we like to start the stimulation. The action of this agonist is going to last for approximately 35 to 40 days. So what it does is, it just allows the patient to take one agonist depot and then you can do your entire stimulation without having to worry about giving daily shots of GNRH agonist. Both the things are absolutely right, trust me. People who like to give daily subcutaneous injections should continue to do that. This is just what we follow and we have been following since a very long time and that's why I am stating this. I also want to tell you that in today's time and generation, people like to do the antagonist protocol, which we call as the short protocol. But remember one thing, when you are using the long protocol, one or two good things, okay? The oocyte quality and the top quality embryos or the quality of blastocyst embryos are going to be excellently good in the long protocol. The reason for that being, if you study the ovary, right, when you study the ovary on day 10 or 11 after giving the depot, you will see that all the follicles are very small, right. It allows for a wonderful synchronized cohort. What actually happens in the antagonist protocol is because there is no suppression. The follicular size, no, I just draw the picture of an ovary in an antag protocol. So what happens is some of the follicles could be big, some could be small, some could be large, some could be very small. Because of this difference, there could be a variable oocyte quality. I am not saying if it is right or wrong. All I am trying to tell you is that this is the advantage. So when do we like to use the long protocol? We like to use the long protocol, especially in patients who have failed previous IVF cycles, in patients who have not formed embryos in the previous IVF cycles, in patients in whom the AMH value, this is our signature point, in patients in whom the AMH value is between 1.7 and 2.5 and antral follicle count is less than 14. If we have this criteria, we usually like to go in for the long protocol. The only disadvantage of using the long protocol for people who are practicing IVF is that they all know that when you give the trigger to the patient somewhere at around day 11 or day 12, you will have to give this patient an HCG trigger, right? An HCG 10,000 units is what is going to be your trigger and this is something which can lead to OHSS. But one thing which can help in preventing that is something called as double aspiration. So, after your oocytes have been aspirated, prick the ovary again and re-aspirate everything. That is something which will help you in preventing the OHSS in all these patients. There are some more additional points which are important as far as agonist protocol is concerned. Remember, when you are in an agonist protocol, the number of days of stimulation instead of routinely 8 or 9 days could extend to approximately 10 to 11 days. This is just one thing which you should remember. Any molecule which you are using. So, if you are using just recombinant FSH, the combination of recombinant FSH plus recombinant LH is going to be much better in the agonist protocol on a practical experience because of the huge LH suppression which occurs when you are using a GNRH agonist. Remember, some amount of LH is mandatory to get that good quality of oocytes, you know. We are going to discuss, we are going to have a master class on FSH and LH as well. Or you know the 2 cell 2 gonadotropin theory. When I discuss that, you will understand why this some amount of LH is very good for the patient. And that is something which you must remember. The one patient in whom we do not use the agonist protocol is in patients with PCOS. Okay. So this is our strict no at our place. We do not use agonist protocol in patients with PCOS. We do not do a batch IVF. 
we are a very busy IVF unit, so we do not do batch IVF. But for people who like to do batch IVF, long protocol is going to be pretty good. This was the absolute basic of the long protocol. As I have said, these master classes are not going to exceed 10 minutes. Any further questions, you can put it on our groups and we shall be very happy to answer. Thank you so much for listening to us.